The standard model of care for patients on a general medical or surgical floor, particularly after surgery in a perioperative setting, is that intermittent assessment of vital signs is performed by nursing staff. That may vary, uh, whether it's two hour intervals, four hour intervals, or more frequently, perhaps. But in general, the standard of care is nursing assessment uh, that's intermittent and not continuous. In addition to reducing the amount of opioids used for analgesia postoperatively as a way to decrease the risk of respiratory compromise, there are other ways to monitor patients continuously for the risk of respiratory compromise. Uh, continuous monitoring of adequacy of ventilation, that is the movement and volume of air, and also the oxygen saturation of individuals is an important component. In an ideal situation, the way you'd like to monitor patients to reduce the risk, either the frequency or severity of respiratory compromise, would be to use continuous surveillance monitoring of all patients, to be able to assess the adequacy of their ventilation, that is, can they exchange carbon dioxide appropriately, and the adequacy of their oxygen exchange to make sure that they are appropriately oxygenated to prevent damage to organs, the brain, or other tissues. In addition, it would be great if we had early warning scores that allow us to predict which patients were at highest risk for respiratory compromise. A variety of different opportunities have been tried, different algorithms uh, with mixed results on whether that improves a parameter, whether related to respiratory compromise. Ultimately though, as we use more and more big data, artificial intelligence of our monitors, uh, we are learning better information about predicting which patients are at risk for respiratory compromise, and that will also help us uh, reduce that frequency or if it occurs, severity of respiratory compromise. Continuous monitoring of patients, surveillance monitoring, uh, really becomes very important in, as this, one of the schemes to reduce the frequency or the severity of respiratory compromise. Intermittent monitoring is inadequate. It's been shown to be inadequate. And therefore, you need a continuous assessment of oxygenation, but also ventilation for patients so you eliminate the harm caused by respiratory compromise. There are a variety of things to limit or prevent hospitals or health systems from using uh, unique monitoring equipment for respiratory compromise. Probably the most important is, is the equipment comfortable to patients? Will patients tolerate the equipment? That's one. Number two, is the equipment accurate? Does it provide an accurate assessment of ventilation and oxygenation? Those things that are tied with respiratory compromise. And then third, but probably a little distant third because it's unknown yet, what's the cost of that to a health system or a hospital? But until we have equipment that is very accurate, that has low false alarm rates, that is comfortable and usable in patients, I'm not sure the price consideration has really been assessed yet because we just don't know yet. Validated risk assessment tools are important in almost any facet of medicine. For respiratory compromise, if we could predict which patients had the highest risk of developing respiratory compromise, or even if they develop it, a severe episode of respiratory compromise, it would go a long way to helping us change how we monitor and survey our patients for um, uh, postoperative respiratory compromise. So, Developing better information, better early warning scores that allow you to predict which patients are, are at risk for respiratory compromise is very important. Respiratory compromise is very important to APSF 
and we are doing a variety of things to not only educate uh, individuals, anesthesia professionals, surgeons, nurses, and others in multiple disciplines that are involved in the care of perioperative patients, but also to promote research in that field and to work with regulatory agencies to require the continuous monitoring of patients, some assessment of their ability to breathe. Right now, uh, there is a re uh, increasing use of pulse oximetry in the perioperative period. But in addition, we'd like to expand that to include an assessment of the adequacy of ventilation. We believe both are important parameters, and APSF will strongly advocate for that. The use of a validated early warning score to predict respiratory compromise would be really important. Unfortunately, the scoring systems we use at this point in time have showed varied results on whether they improve outcome at all. Um, as we start to look at big data, though, and we use machine ad adaptation or artificial intelligence to improve our predictions, and we can have a better sense of who will develop respiratory compromise, or at least a severity of respiratory compromise, we'll do better at preventing and mitigating respiratory compromise. The Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation feels very strongly about the need to continue to address opioid-induced respiratory impairment or respiratory compromise in perioperative settings. So we are putting resources to research, advocating both to manufacturers that can help, drug industry to help develop new drugs that can help, and also to regulatory agencies and health systems to implement continuous monitoring of patients to reduce the risk of, uh, or at least the severity of, respiratory compromise.